My name is Gordon Denny. I have over 35 years of direct hands-on experience in the domestic soybean industry as both a soybean trader, a soybean plant manager, and as a consultant. I'd like to talk today a little bit about soybean quality and how it matters to the entire value chain. The topics I'd like to cover today are soybean industry update, soybean composition and quality trends, soybean oil versus soybean meal value, soybean processing capabilities, sustainability, and soybean value chain cooperation and goals. First off, a soybean industry update. The profits in the soybean industry, at least from the processor level and probably for the exporters, has been as good as we have ever seen it. There have been at least three consecutive years of record or near record profits for most processors. Demand obviously has been very good for both exports of soybeans, soybean meal, as well as domestic demand from poultry and swine. The USB's role has been so significant in terms of what it has done with regard to very uh, valuable studies and the projects that has been promoted. The quality versus quantity, uh, we seem to continue to have very good field yields. However, processing yields continue to go down. And we'll discuss a little more about that in just a moment. And then lastly, a little bit about the competition that we're, we're seeing here in the United States. Um, lots, of, lots of folks are spending lots of time, money, and effort going after the gold standard of feed ingredients, soybean meal. Soybean value chain trends. The world economy, both meat and poultry demand, obviously is increasing as folks can afford higher quality, higher flavor meats. Trade tariffs continue to hurt the U.S. a little bit with regard, particularly with regard to Argentina. Currency rates in the past three or four years have been a real boom. They now are going to be a negative as we continue to see the dollar strengthen, even though we've plateaued and actually gone down a little bit in the last three months. But the dollar will continue to increase as uh, interest rates go up. And there's a lot of confusion whether or not the renminbi or the Chinese yuan might become the new world currency. Secondly, some governmental influences. Obviously, the government likes to have their finger in our health and diet. Uh, biofuel mandates, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent for our crops or other crops. And then how tax laws uh, implicate our industry. Environmental controls on sustainability and water consumption. Genetically modified organisms, GMO, both the safety, the acceptance, and primarily the perception. The economics of the soybean value chain, I'll discuss that here in just a moment. And then soybean quality, and that equals both soybean meal and oil value. Soybean value chain trends continuing with that. We are in a down commodity cycle. We were, again, last three or four years, we've seen record prices, record profits. Um, and throughout the soybean value chain in an unprecedented way, meaning if we look at 15 or 18 different components of the soybean value chain that are interconnected, um, they've almost all seen great years. That has primarily ending, and the strong dollar is one of those factors. Increased South American competition, obviously. The new Panama Canal and the new Nicaraguan Canal, which is going to cost $50 billion and started last year, and it's supposed to finish in 2020. Some folks think that those expansions and deepening and widening of the canals may more give advantage to South America than North America because they have deeper ports, can load bigger ships than we currently can in, the, in New Orleans. Cheaper energy, which we're all benefiting from in our personal pocketbooks, but it will absolutely have an impact on our profitability in biofuels and also more governmental, environmental, and consumer pressure for our, our products and processes to become sustainable. The soybean value chain trends, we'll continue with that. Millennials dictate trends. The social media, Facebook and others, is the number one source of information for lots of folks. GMO labeling laws will impact consumption. And then the terms that consumers look for today and this is kind of the, um, uh, I don't know, Whole Foods kind of, uh, uh, of uh, um, labeling, all natural, locally sourced, non-GMO, organic, sustainable, low carbon footprint, non-solvent, no hormones, no antibiotics, cage-free, range-fed, no feral crate, 
no artificial colors, no artificial ingredients, etc. Those are the terms that consumers have and will continue to look for, whether or not they are based in fact and science, or whether or not they are a perception, almost as a moot point. The consumers hear that, if they read it on Facebook, if they read it on the internet, they will probably believe it, and uh, their pocketbook will follow their mind. The economics of the soybean value chain, again, crush margins have been at historically high levels for about over three years due to the crop failures, high export demand, high domestic poultry and swine margins, a relatively weak dollar, China growth, and South American politics. In 2014, last calendar year, the gross processing margin, GPM, of domestic soybean processors at times was well over $3 per bushel unprecedented. Now they're still excellent in 2015 uh, with a gross processing margin running $1.75 or so, but trending lower and a speeding and packer margins head lower and maybe head negative for a while because of the strong US dollar and the big world crops and lower farmer profits, equipment demand down, commodity down cycle, all those things will impact our gross processing margins. We'll go to a real quick example of a domestic processing margin, and uh, the soybean gross processing margin, the GPM, includes soybeans, soybean meal, soybean oil. And if we look, at, and I did this about uh, I don't know, a month ago, I guess, but they're all it's all fairly current with regard to the relationships of each of the, the products with soybeans considered. The board price plus or minus the cash basis gives you a cash price. And then below the soybean meal, I've used a, a $350 per ton, including the board of the basis, and that the, the conversion factor there, 0.0236, is just a conversion factor that converts it from um, the yield per ton into a dollars per bushel. Soybean oil times 11 and a half uh, pounds per bushel gives us grand total there at the bottom of $11.80. If the cash price of soybeans is $9.85, that leaves a gross processing margin of about a dollar and ninety-five cents gross processing margin, central Illinois values about a month ago. Something that has changed that's a pretty uh, significant factor is used to be sixty-five percent of the gross processing margin was derived from soybean meal. Last year that got as high as seventy-five to seventy-seven percent of the gross processing margin because of the value of soybean meal, the demand for soybean meal. Right now though again about a seventy the 30% ratio with soybean meal being more than twice as valuable to the gross processing margin as soybean oil. Domestic processor priorities, and when I put A, B, C, D, uh, that can be ADM, ag processing, fungi, uh, Cargill, CGB, CHS, Dreyfus, uh, anyway, the domestic processors, they, they, they're just one part of the company. Uh, they also, all those companies have grain trade, they own barges, they own rail cars, they export lots of beans and, and other products. They may have canola interests, they may have ethanol, palm, they have facilities in Europe, South America, and Asia. The short-term individual economics will always dictate where these companies place their priorities and their capital. There is no altruistic domestic soybean loyalty except by the United Soybean Board. Soybean meal competition, obviously DDGs with uh, improved handling and de-oiled value, which has hurt the demand because the energy or fat left in DDGs or soybean meal is the number one uh, cost component for at least a poultry process. So they want more fat, more oil left. Canola meal, they've improved protein with new varieties. The Canadian government continues to help out their industry. Synthetic amino acids with close to 100% consistent and digestible, and there are many well-heeled foreign producers that are dramatically pushing the inclusion of synthetic amino acids. And then lastly, our major competition, obviously, South America with exchange rates favoring them, quality, um, good, relatively good quality of their beans and meal, logistics of new canals and larger vessels, and new roads and railroads. However, U.S. soybean meal is still the gold standard others are priced by and compared with. Optimum soybean meal quality, we're working on some projects where we're trying to go into a plant and without any new capital, without any new labor, 
Uh, we're improving the process. We're improving the quality of the finished meal. What we hope this will lead to are better soybean varieties, emphasizing the meal, the protein levels of the meal, the amino acid profiles. We would like to encourage the seed companies to drop the low processing yield varieties, like to encourage the farmers to grow for protein and oil per acre. We would like to see the processors compensated for the increased cost and loss opportunity value of increasing feed conversion ratios, meaning if they leave more fat, increase the protein of soybean meal, which they can do today with no new capital, the processors need to be compensated by that for the end users, by the end users. A soybean protein and fat scale, which a lot of exports already trade on, and or a soybean premium, soybean meal premium scale as opposed to just a discount scale. And lastly, increased efficiency, viability, and profitability of the domestic soybean value chain will follow. In my opinion, the holy grail of the U.S. soybean processing industry will be a high oleic, low oleosaccharide, low trypsin, a non-GMO, non-solvent extracted soybean. Um, the high oleic, obviously we're there. We just need to get all the wide consumer and governmental acceptance. The low oleosaccharide, where we take the sugars out of the, out of the meal, increase feed conversion ratios in broilers by 2.3%. And on, on young piglets, the average daily gain will increase 6.7%. Those are huge numbers. Trypsin, which will reduce toasting and increase the palatability and digestibility of soybean meal. In summary, the U.S. soybeans have continued their intense competition with aggressive programs and products. And we have continued competition from our outside um, uh, competitors. Soybean meal, 70% of soybean value is where the, the meal lies, and it's seen consistent diminished quality over the past 35 years, meaning the soybeans we're growing today have lower amounts of protein and amino acid profile than they did significantly lower than they did 30 to 35 years ago, and every year that trend seems to go lower. And the United Soybean Board is the only organization that is truly committed to improving the entire value chain.